Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge at MyBet.com. This is Dylan and in our sixth episode of the Riders of the Storm series, I'll be playing six simultaneous Storm cash game tables. Texas Hold'em, No Limit 20. And for all of you who haven't seen the previous videos, please do so before viewing this one because the pace will be intense and we won't be explaining all of the theory that we've covered in the previous five episodes. So six simultaneous tables is definitely, like I said, going to be pushing the line. But we're going to give it a shot um, for a couple reasons. One is to see if our win rate's going to be better playing six tables, maybe a bit tighter um, than we do the four. And the other is going to be to see exactly how many hands uh, we can get in within an hour or two of a real-time session recording at these uh, Storm Poker tables, right? So I'm, I'm a little bit excited about that. Um, curious to see if we can break the 2,000 mark within an hour or two. And yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. The other thing, as I had mentioned earlier, definitely if this is going to be very intense for those of you who are seeing just this video now for the first time and haven't seen any of the previous videos. Again, please do so. Um, everything we'll be doing here will build upon uh, the previous five episodes. And given the pace, I won't be able to explain a lot of the things that I'm doing as I had already. Yeah, in the first, yeah, in the first four videos, especially, and then the fifth was, of course, just going forward. Another thing that you guys see here is that we've changed the lineup a little bit. Uh, instead of doing a yeah, stats overview at the very end of the series, which actually we've covered in great detail in uh, pretty much every video, uh, with the exception maybe yeah maybe the fourth and the fifth, and of course this one, <laughs> um, there's really not a lot else to say uh, without going into excruciating detail. So we've opted to yeah leave that out for now, and instead of that, go into... Yeah, more detail um, concerning the hybrid strategy, small and mid stack play here at the here at the Storm Poker tables at my bet. You can of course apply all those principles uh, to ring games, and yeah, the hybrid, the mid stack, short stack plays, of course, markedly markedly better when you've got proper statistics on your opponents um, at the Storm tables right now. At least I don't. Uh, maybe some of you guys do. Uh, if that is the case, please do drop me a line. Uh, concerning a solution for that, but yeah, right now we're playing statistically blind, and as mentioned previously, you know we're playing more general tendencies uh, than exact, yeah, statistical science. So that's coming up in the next video. Uh, hybrid strategy, uh, so-called mid-stack or short-stack strategy. Uh, we'll do the theory first, and then a four-table session to be able to really cover that in greater detail for your future play. And with that, guys, and no further ado, we'll jump into our final six-table storm session with our big stack strategy play. So in order to reduce the amount of uh, difficult decisions that I've got to make, I will try and play a bit tighter range, for example, folding the ace-nine suited under the gun, stuff like that. And when we get involved in more than a couple hands per table, um, or at, let's say at one given time, um, what I'll do is probably sit out on um, on the remaining tables where I'm not actually active, uh, just so that I you know I can avoid hopefully some of these timeouts uh, that I had mentioned earlier, and a few of the unforced errors right that you're going to experience from time to time, definitely when you're playing this many tables. Or, yeah, again, six tables is not a lot for a professional uh, multi-tabler, but six tables is quite a great deal um, when, yeah, you're playing the Storm variant here. Any kind of speed poker, um, it's just so quick, right? And you really got to be on your toes, and that's why, you know, I hope that our commentary here isn't going to suffer because of it. Uh, this guy isolates, we'll just flat one with the AQ, play some fitter fold poker. Uh, we flop top pair, top kicker, inside nut, straight draw, and we put him all in. Ace king, you see, almost timed out of that, right? We take that down. Right, he's only got three something left. We gotta shove it. Um, that's a bummer. He lets it go, <laughs> luckily enough. <laughs> Maybe he's on a similar hand. 
Yeah, guys, and we're kicking this off. Um, as you hear, there is no background music, and I should probably reduce the volume here in case that's too loud. Um, that that came from a request from one of our one of our viewers here who said that um, yeah, the commentary is good, game's good. Uh, he enjoyed it, but the background music was a bit distracting, so we're leaving that out for now. And I will sit out of these couple of tables and reduce the mics such that. Yeah, it's not peeping and knocking people out of their out of their chairs here. <laughs> I hope that's better. Pick up kings here in the middle. And one thing that I will do here is just check fold, guys. Um, I'm gonna pot that. Um, told you guys not to do that, but when you're playing this many tables, um, you you can go ahead and include that. You know what you're playing at this point. We'll isolate here. Um, Record that. Could have seen that here, but um, yeah, definitely don't worry about. It. Yeah, not adhering to that rule. Um, okay, so pots. Yeah, more than our remaining stack, we just shove. Hope he's on ace jack or some kind of uh, straight or flush draw, and he lets it go. Good result. Non showdown. Seventy nine. Not on that board. Yeah, guys, and that's how it is. Over pairs here, we take a half pot shot. Fives is still not good. King 10, we're gonna let go, whereas with fewer tables, we might have played it. And yes, off we are. Another, another pair of kings, same table, tensies. And you know what? I should just shove that. Um, shit, I actually got um, disconnected or I got uh, timed out. Um, that's gonna happen uh, with my tens. That would, you know, that's that's a kind of unforced error that I'm talking about, right? Uh, we definitely got that guy. He had, you know, um, no stack to speak of remaining, and we got timed out where we actually wanted to shove, right? So that's it's you know, it's compounded difficulties here when I'm trying to do a commentary at the same time. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna do our best here, see what's possible, and yeah. Play on. Hope you guys enjoy it. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to contact us at any time. That was supposed to be a bet, for example. Uh, 24, why not? We flop the open and straight draw. No dice on the flush draw here. Maybe the two's too good. Limp fold, top right. And uh, let's go ahead. Swing in a miss. Also. No, we can let that go with a good conscience. The ten we should actually call again. Yeah, I'm already seeing that this is uh, this is getting tough. Um, let's go ahead and float one here. See what he does. Kingsies, we got to check. Gets to raise. Gets to bluff. Gets to bit. And we take that down. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, so. You know, I'm gonna block bet this one because uh, he might have hit his his flush. But yeah, let's see. We're good. Lovely. And the other thing is, guys. Yeah, you've seen these guys kind of time out. Um, I'm not I'm not clicking yes to get back in this yet because um, I want to make one quick point. Uh, when you run this many tables. And also, yeah, doing a recording, it could well be the case that your system is not going to be quick enough for that. Um, I think mine definitely is. However, um, I am noticing already with multiple tables that, um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna squeeze this here. Um, you know, mid position raising and flat, that's too weak. Um, Yes, I'm noticing that um, sometimes you know when I'm clicking these buttons, it's not actually registering. So I'm I'm making a click and moving mentally on to my next table, while um, actually I shouldn't be right. Um, it didn't register, or for example, I'm maybe maybe I'm just missing one of the edges here, and I'm getting on the wrong side of um, yeah, wrong side of the button that I'm looking to hit. Stuff like that. Who knows? So just keep that definitely in mind when you're playing this many tables. Um, if you're seeing that there is a technical difficulty there, um, reduce that or yeah, reduce the number of programs you get running in the background. We check behind, let's see what happens. If we get another double check here, we'll, we'll, we'll make a signal bluff for sure. Uh, you know, on our inside straight draw. Looking for the big jack, we get flatted. 
maybe could have taken a shot already on the flop. You know, these guys might have picked up a backdoor flush draw. <laughs> Probably this guy even bets it out, right? And we can let that go. Um, yeah. Probably should have bet a position here on the uh, on the flop. And we're back in action. And there are different ways you guys can do this too. I mean, kind of like a circular motion going around here uh, clockwise is kind of what I what I shoot for. Um, but again, yeah, you're not going to be able to handle that the entire time, depending on what kind of hands pop up and where. Um, but kind of like you know, kind of like this motion is something potentially good to consider. Um, but again, yeah, you're probably going to just jump all over the place as we move forward here. Let's get let's do it. speed fold. Jackson. That's three bit cut off stealer. And then C bit on the low board, represent the over. Flat the jacks. We get screwed on the king shot. He halves it. Let's float him, we got position. He checks it and we half pot it right back at him. And he lets it go. Now we're going counterclockwise to contradict exactly what I just said. <laughs> Whatever flow you're using, guys, just go with it. Um, but try to have something circular going on here so that um, you, again, you minimize the number of unforced errors that uh, I've been experiencing at least. All right, three bet squeeze here. We just go ahead and pot it. And to keep things simple, when you're playing this mini table as well, um, go ahead and go ahead and just make your standard three bet pot button, and don't think much about it afterwards. Um, but you know, once you do make that aggressive move, make sure that you're not on other tables, and all of a sudden you get re raised and don't notice that. You know, all of a sudden you're facing a four bet over here, stuff like that. Um, yeah, try and try and kind of have the bigger picture here. Uh, I gotta take a shot, otherwise we can't take that down. Um, he hit his set on the river. Can't believe he didn't raise, but yeah, it was a bit of a dangerous board. And begs the question if we shouldn't have just bet the turn. <laughs> I think everybody out there is screaming, why didn't you? <laughs> yeah, of course we should have. Um, and I believe I already mentioned this, guys, but just in case, um, yeah, no background music for this one. That was a request from one of our viewers. Um, who had mentioned uh, that he likes the videos, but the yeah the background music was a bit distracting, and I think that opinion is held by quite a few people. So although you know I like playing with music in the background, um, yeah for yeah for these purposes here for our coaching videos, we'll definitely uh, say thank you very much for that feedback and leave out the background music for now. Uh, if there is a differing opinion, of course, um, please do let us know. Um, aces didn't get any action. Raise up the ace two suited. Fold the ace two off. Ace Q is going to be a re-steal versus the cutoff raise. Uh, and I could have found a flat there with the suited ace. Just a min raise. Alright, and versus our 3-bet here, we've got initiative, so we're going to take a shot there on the low board, representing over. And he mends back into us. We've got no draw to speak of. Um, I, you know, I don't like min, min raises on the flop at the small stakes, as you guys well know. And yeah, we whiffed hard. I think we'd have bet more if he was trying to push us off. A uh, half pot bet, normally, you know, our min raises normally want to get called in general. And we flat four set value with our sixes, looking for El Diablito. Another third six. Yeah, fours are now toast. We're looking for the six there or our set. Um, okay, now we got two relatively big set players, and we're still gonna we're gonna overcall that. Swing and a miss, no set, no bet versus two players. All's well, and we play on two eighty, and we're out. 
JQ, we'll see if we can't find a steel race here from the button. That's for example, I'm trying to click that and it took me about three clicks, guys, to get that to register. So again, that may be the recording software, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but that's definitely a bit less than optimal at this point. Uh, it should have been, you know, a bit more, three, at least four times here when you're isolating limpers. Um, didn't see that because there was the table overlap. Uh, Ace-10 was an open timeout fold. <laughs> 70, and let's float one in position. Miss our card if he checks. <laughs> he does not, we let that go. If he checks, we could have checked behind, or we could have gone ahead and... Um, executed the float move, just bet the turn, but he bet it back out and that leaves us, or leads us to believe that he well, is not bullshitting. Jackson is still good, and we take a half pot bet on this very dry board. Yeah, it's a small stacker, mid stacker, and we let that roll. Uh, here we up the ante a bit. Now the old 9 offsuit, you know, I mean, if you're gonna do it, um, adhering to the um, to the suited rule is a good idea just to reduce your your total VPIP. Uh, and here we take shot, represent the represent the Queensies. That's a cool one. Um, it's flat. Let's flat. Let's get out of here. Let's take a shot. Let's check raise our set. Uh, didn't get a chance. Now we got to bet a bit more because it is too suited. 10-8, min bit. Hmm. Looks strong. Now I can do it. Put him all in. Bet this. Call this. Probably should have raised the ace Q. Uh, maybe got out here cheap. Let's see. All right, open and straight draw. We send the bluff out, top left. Aces we pot as a squeeze. Hope you guys have been able to follow all this. It is again quite intense. We take down our semi bluff. Uh, onesies bets into us. That's good. How much is the remaining stack? Eleven. So I shove now. If he's flopped a set, we're just toast. But you know that's one time in eight and a half, as you guys well know. And again, you know when I shove like that, when I'm playing this many tables, I also don't have to fool with it anymore, right? And um, in the warm up for this session. Um, I had actually kings and I timed out, uh, which was a heartbreaker because it was actually a pretty pretty serious pot. I mean, okay, we're playing NL twenty, but the uh, considering the big blinds, it was uh, it was yeah, it was a decent pot. And um, yeah, getting timed out that deep on the river that's uh, that's always a big bummer. So again, guys, you gotta you know be honest with yourself if you're seeing that you're you're getting knocked out of hands, um, timed out. Uh, again, making some making some um, bad moves, maybe bad raises, whatever. I'm just gonna, for example, <laughs> maybe flatting here, looking for the big queen. Um, you know, you feel like yeah, it's a, a re-steal here. Yeah, playing suboptimally, stuff like that. Uh, let's do one for the miracle. Uh, let's play the out of position float line. Two twenty is gonna be let go. And see if he buys it. Lovely, lovely. All right, and on we play here. Running straight draws are no good. Nor are running flush draws out of position for sure. <laughs> uh, this guy's in position. I've yellow tagged him. It means he's not. He's among the uh, better players. And let's just see what he does. To a min re risk. After a bit of a wait, we flop our AC. Completely monitor on board. Should be scary if he plays back. We know where we are. He does not. We take it down. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And on we go. I thought I had already played that. And that's again, guys, it's one of those examples where you know you think you had already. Major move wasn't registered. You're already mentally somewhere else. Um, yeah, it happens. 
So yeah, whenever you're playing these, you know, multi-table sessions, definitely just make sure your yeah, your mouse is doing what it's intended to do, and that the program is also picking that up. Um, good. Man, yeah, it's really kind of sticking actually these buttons. So. I don't know if you guys have seen that in the video or not, but it's um, there's a serious serious misclick factor going on here. All right, and I'm really, you know, I'm rarely pausing the video, guys. I'm just gonna play this one straight out. I uh, probably should have raised that in case we run a bare ace, but we play it a bit for pot control. If the the heart doesn't come, he takes another shot. We just flat and think we're good with our ace. Yeah, I'm not gonna be raising. Um, yeah, water. Play that for pot control. Limp one again, looking for the eight here. Hope I didn't time out with my ace queen over here. <laughs> No dies. All right, so I think yeah we're we're running all right as you can see here 38, 27 we're up a bit, um, 21's also up a bit, 25's up so we're we're up here and flat on these two tables, um, maybe a bit down you know cause of course we as you guys know from the previous videos we have the um, auto top off um, checked that means that whenever we get underneath uh, 100 big blinds it will top us back off. Two twenty bucks here to NL twenty challenge, and let's re-steal here with the AQ. So under the gun raise flat squeeze AJ is toast. Raise up those tens, and again, you know three X four X. Um, you guys can keep it consistent, change it up a bit. I haven't seen actually here at this platform a uh, small bet option which would be nice uh, any tips on that guys definitely let me know also being able to roll um, roll bets with your mouse scroller that would also be a nice addition to this relatively really really good platform I'm really really impressed like it a lot um, relatively nice guys I haven't um, also in tournaments I haven't seen a lot of guys talking a lot of noise you know it's gentlemen's game here uh, and ladies game and yeah, we're, we're enjoying it for sure. Uh, MyBet.com again for you guys. Uh, just tuning in. This is Dylan. And the end of our series. Hoping he missed his <laughs> flush draw. Oh, mercy. And there you go. You know, we're playing three players, and I would have never made that bet in my right mind. But I was distracted. Luckily, take that down versus three players. That was a horrible move, um, by the way. Um, it was just, yeah, just because I overlooked what I was... Um, what I was doing there, I didn't actually, I didn't actually see here out of the corner of my eye all these players that were still um, able to check call or check raise me, and yeah, <laughs> multi tables, guys, be careful. There we go. Two and a half time it here as a resteal. He lets it go. All right, so here we will squeeze with the ace ten. And again, right at you know four times the uh, initial race size. All right, and three quarter, two thirds potted on the two suited boards, connected boards, stuff like that. Take that down. Catching some decent hands, let's hope to get a little action. Flat one here out of position, looking for pretty much that flop. That's great. We got an open ended nut straight draw. Um, one of the best results, plus nice, plus the ace here. And no action on the ace, I guess. Well, we may still be good with the ace. Let's see. Let me check, see if he can give us a free or cheap showdown. He had flopped two pair. Wow. Um, again, guys, it's about 49 to 1 against. If you're holding non paired cards and flop two pair, don't worry about that. I like the like the way that went down. Surprised he didn't raise that up. On the end, I uh, would have definitely called. 
<laughs> Imagine that. Hard luck, though, uh, on us not completing our straight. You know, those are the ones, when they flop two pairs, stuff like that, um, you're very often off the races when you've got your set. Um, you know, turn your turn your straight. Uh, flushes, you don't always get paid off on, right, because it's so obvious. Um, but especially especially straights and, you know, the double barrel gut shot straights are just fantastic because a lot of players just don't see those coming. And, yeah, when they flopped anything better than pair, um, you often you often look good uh, for implied value, right? Um, getting guys to play for stacks instead of just, you know, normal raises, um, pot control kind of moves, stuff like that. A lot of guys are really happy, you know, with any top pair of decent kicker. A lot of guys also get stack crazy when they flop top two or any two. And yeah, those are the ones that really pay off when you have a better made hand. Uh, Resteal. And I don't know if you guys have heard the saying, twos never lose, but um, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> 76, bottom end of that straight draw, but we'll take a shot. And take it down. AT, no hope. Uh, min rays under the gun here in the middle. We shall re raise. Now we take a take a shot at that pot here. And let's see what this guy does out of position. All right, so he just flatted, and now I think we're toast. See that this here represent the queen. Take it down. All right, action Jackson versus ball slate of this flat one. Um, you know, back door, not flush roll. We'll see what happens. Re-steal with the ace eight suited. Isolate with the AT. Ninety eight over cards and the flush draw. A lot of action, so I'm gonna just sit that one out. Bet this. Shit. <laughs> Getting a little hot. Getting a little hot here. Alright, three, four, nada. Gotta take a shot. And take it down on the river. Alright, El Diablito, we've been looking for him for about 15 hours. Looks like he's on vacation. Um, why not? Represent our turn flush. Now we do actually have a flush, but it's crappy flush. And hope he's just on non spade. 240 is too much to figure it out. <laughs> uh, we'll let that go. Alright, and we're back. And you guys are seeing, I mean, it's, yeah, it's really, really fast, and I'm absolutely not certain that um, six tables is my optimal game. Um, more than likely four, right? I think we can play four quite well. Haven't had any um, tech issues with that, and we can really kind of keep, yeah, keep a good eye on what's going on um, on all tables. Yeah, even get to know some of the players here by name, um, who's doing what. And as I had recommended earlier, guys, you know, definitely, um, if you are playing this game as your regular game. Um, then you need to, you know, you need to run your um, analysis after the fact in your database. No doubt about it. All right, we raise it up, and we isolate with the AQ. Raise up the big slick here for some in raiser here from Dinga. And swing the miss, but we can represent the king, of course. Take it down, AQ uncontested, get resistance here, pick up the inside straight draw and the nut flush draw, and we take another shot there. We double up on that because the draw is pretty decent. Again, this is Dylan. If you guys have any comments or questions, as always, please feel free to contact us at any time. Till the next video, guys, all the best, and definitely best of luck at your next Storm Poker table.